not quiet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. I'm Mayor Nancy Rotering, and I'm so happy that you can be with us, that we can all be here together. Uh, let's give it up for the Highland Park High School Brass Quintet. <laughs> Saturday morning, and they are here with us. We really appreciate it. If I could ask everyone to please stand, if you're able, for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I'm going to turn my back on all of you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd now like to introduce Hannah Lubell, who will sing the national anthem. Please stay standing if you're able. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Hannah. Michael Woloshin, chaplain of the Jewish War Veterans, Post 29, will now give the opening prayer. Almighty God, at this opening of our meeting, we pray to you for a full measure of wisdom and strength that our heritage of Americanism may be alive and meaningful within us. May the ideals of democracy continue to grow and develop in the world to bring blessings to all men and women. May the tradition of our faith and faith of our founding fathers continue to enrich and ennoble our lives. Grant, O Heavenly Father, that our command ever be motivated by this heritage. In peace as, as in war, may we always be champions of righteousness and warriors for justice. Guard our deliberations and bless us that we may bring closer to reality your kingdom upon earth our vision and our goal throughout the ages. Amen. Amen. Now you may be seated. So again, good morning and welcome. Before we continue, I just want to advise all present that today's program is being filmed. The video will be available on the city's social media by Monday, November 13th in the afternoon. So if you don't want to be filmed, that's your chance to hit the road. Uh, thank you all for joining us today in our observance of Veterans Day, the day we celebrate the men and the women who serve and have served in all branches of the United States military. The date and time of this ceremony, as many of you know, <clears throat> excuse me, has deep significance. It was during the Great War the war to end all wars, that on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, 
an armistice between Germany and the Allied nations went into effect. The following year, on November 11, 1919, Armistice Day was commemorated for the first time. President Wilson proclaimed the day should be filled with solemn pride in the heroism of those who died in the country's service and with gratitude for the victory. In 1934, Armistice Day became a legal holiday. After the Second World War required the largest mobilization of servicemen and women in the history of the United States, veteran service organizations urged Congress to change the word armistice to veterans. And so on June 1st, 1954, Congress approved this change and November 11th became a day to honor all American veterans wherever and whenever they served. Before I introduce our guest speaker, I'd like to extend our gratitude to Heidi Smith and the Highland Park Public Library for their continued support of this annual observance and providing this warm and welcoming venue. It's deeply appreciated. I also would like to thank my council colleagues who have joined us today, Yumi Ross, Kim Stone, Annette Littower, Andres Tapia, and our city manager, Gita Newkirk, and our assistant city manager, Aaron Jason. Thank you for all of your help, and Jennifer Dotson for putting this together. And a warm thank you for Girl Scout Troop 47764 for volunteering to hand out programs today. Delighted to see them. As a former Girl Scout, I say go Girl Scouts. And with that, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and now it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Commander Terry Trawick, a native of Lake Charles, Louisiana, enlisted in the Navy in November of 1988. Following completion of A school, he completed tours aboard USS LaSalle in Bahrain, USS Mobile Bay in Yokosuka, Japan, Shore Intermediate Maintenance Activity in San Diego, USS John S. McCain and USS Paul Hamilton, both in Hawaii, and completed numerous sea schools. He achieved the rank of Chief Petty Officer in the year 2000. In August of 2001, Commander Trawick was commissioned through the Limited Duty Officer Program. He reported to USS Lake Champlain CG57 in San Diego as the Electronics Materials Officer and earned his Surface Warfare Officer designation. In his career, he's had assignments on ships such as the USS LaSalle, the USS Mount Whitney, the USS Harry S. Truman, USS Theodore Roosevelt, and USS Abraham Lincoln. He's also had assignments on shore in various locations in Italy, San Diego, California, and Norfolk, Virginia. Commander Trawick earned a master's degree in business administration, was inducted as a member of the International Honor Society of Business. He is entitled to wear the Meritorious Service Medal, the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal, the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal, in addition to various other personal unit, personal unit campaign and service awards. Commander Trawick assumed the duties of executive officer at Naval Station Great Lakes in February 2023. And so I can say, as a native of Lake Charles, Louisiana, he certainly came here for the weather. I'm delighted to welcome Commander Trawick. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you to Mayor Rotering and the City of Highland Park for inviting me to speak today. And thank you to the veterans, their families, caregivers, survivors, and to those still on active duty. It is a profound, profound honor and privilege to be here with you today and to serve with you. Today, the words of sacrifice and service take on special significance as we honor many Americans, past and present, who have taken up the profession of arms to defend our great nation. We celebrate Veterans Day because it is our sacred obligation as a country to recognize our veterans to remember what they have fought and died for, and to reaffirm our commitment to the values inspired by their service. We come together once a year to salute all those dedicated service members who wore the cloth of our nation. During times of war and peace, veterans stood as one to protect our country, our sacred values, and our freedom. These patriots came from all over our country to band together to become the greatest fighting force in the world. Veterans, on this day, we come together as a nation to express our deep appreciation for all that you have done and for all that you continue to do. When you returned home and took off your uniform, you continued to serve and lead in communities such as this across our nation. You serve as police and firefighters, business owners, soccer coaches, administrators and factory workers, mentors, teachers, ministers and elected officials, and much, much more. You utilize the skills you learned in the military, those tangible and intangible, to help people 
enhance society, and make our communities a better and safer place. Veterans, every day, through your example, you make America stronger. You represent the best of America, unwavering bravery, unsurpassed ability, and unflinching devotion to duty. I see these qualities every day at Naval Station Great Lakes, where each year we mold 39,000 civilians, most of them in their early 20s, into sailors at the Navy's only boot camp. Upon graduation, these newly minted sailors leave here and travel to every corner of the globe to defend democracy and freedom. Right now, your Navy is responding to various crises, deterring would-be adversaries and safeguarding the world's sea lanes. Your Navy is strengthening our maritime par partnerships, enhancing our ability to provide disaster relief, and responding to emergencies around the world. Our timeless mission of promoting America's peacetime, national security interests, and prosperity is what motivates us today and every day, just as it has motivated veterans for generations. Since the birth of our nation, American sailors, Marines, soldiers, airmen, and guardsmen have sworn an oath, not to a person, not to a party, but to support and to defend the Constitution of the United States. Veterans, you answered the call, and when you did, you left the people you love and the place you call home, and you risked everything. You're un you unselfishly sacrificed so much to safeguard the lives and liberty of people you may never meet. You honorably put service before self. I salute you and everything you have done and continue to do for our country. Today we celebrate our nation's veterans and the services they provide our country, from serving in combat missions to maintaining readiness to providing aid during natural disasters. Veterans have always been there for us. Our appreciation and gratitude are endless. Once again, thank you for allowing me to commemorate this Veterans Day with you here today. Thank you, Commander. It's now my great pleasure to introduce City Poet Laureate and veteran retired U.S. Air Force Major Laura Joyce Hubbard, who will read an original poem. Thank you everyone for coming today. Thanks to the city for having a position that allows for the language of poetry to be present at an event like Veterans Day. Thank you to my fellow veterans here in uniform, here in civilian clothes. Um, thanks to the children who have been so helpful in supporting veterans and to our high school musicians. Um, this is an ode. This is my interpretation of an ode. An ode is a love song, and this is to capture for veterans the kind of relentless nature of service. As much as we chose it, as much as we love it, there is a relentless nature to it. It doesn't stop for children's birthdays, anniversaries, holidays, or even if you're ill. So it is called serving. <clears throat> there were warnings. There were no warnings slipping into my black boots and olive flight suit, braiding my hair, pressing my name tag on my chest, zipping my B4 bag, kissing cowboy goodbye, I was leaving. We were leaving our base on the rolling Texas plains. We were always leaving. I was scared. I was thinking of O'Grady, He'd been shot down by Bosnian Serbs and was famously rescued after six days of evading. Eating leaves and drinking dew, surviving. There were 25 pound missiles on shoulders near our runways. There were signatures, there were always signatures. On Dayton peace accords this time. Warring parties were compromised, compromising. Families were gathering, the women's skirts gathered at the knee, slips showing, blouses billowing. We were saluting. I was wrapping my calves with boot blousers. The men were rooting for their six-year-olds playing soccer. The six-year-olds were sliding, cleats flying, lying in the grass crying. We were leaving for the Balkans. In Trebinitsia, bodies were lying. Soccer stadiums filled, 
the killing years from a ruling, from prosecutors appealing, The Hague eventually deciding genocide. I didn't know I would soon be staring into the homes of the dead, lying to myself about compartmentalizing, about trying. Women were grieving. The meteorologist was droning, ignoring. We were always ignoring, always pretending. They'll be precip, he was saying. My stomach was aching. I was ignoring it, bending over aerial maps, mapping jet routes, black lines. We called it the upside down wedding cake of airspace. We were filing, signing flight plans, spinning prop blades, firing engines. I was piloting, my head burning, a flu reeling inside me. We were landing, laying over, fueling, refueling, maintaining. I was eating ice chips, chipping, chiseling history, naming nav aids. Years later, we would call this camaraderie. I was hydrating, flushing, sparking was bringing me ice. We were always bringing people, pallets, papers, paratroopers. The generals were calling it peacekeeping. We were piecing together our leave taking. We have to go, Mikey was saying. Take the crew bunk. We were always ready, all volunteer force. I was sleeping, pulling winter issue flight gear over my ears. Bobo was flying. We were leaving Newfoundland, always departing, checking out, not needing another night. We were puddle jumping to Reykjavik, climbing. The northern lights were wrapping streaks around the cockpit. I was wrapping T-squared's green flight jacket over my eyes, but a strong hand was pushing, wake up, wake up, you're missing it. Rutro was badgering. I was forgetting, we were always forgetting. Where, where are we? My eyes were slits. Bobo was yelling, look, look. The cockpit glass was filling, neon, fluorescent, like phosphorescence. God was painting, dipping in green ink, brushing the deep black. The world was sleeping. We were deploying, ocean crossing. Neat, I said. I was always agreeing. But my body, it was keeping count. It was refusing. Too many partings on hot tarmacs. I was in longing. We were always separating always in training, heading to war, to warring factions. I was multiplying myself, then dividing into fractions, my corpus reducing itself, some parts leaving, some staying behind, no remainder. My crew and I were descending, the sun eventually rising. Mikey was clearing, scanning the skies with his eyes. I was breathing, we were all breathing, we were serving. Thank you. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, now I'd like to introduce Korean War veteran and volunteer spokesperson William Fireside, who's going to talk about Honor Flight Chicago. Why are you applauding? I haven't said anything yet. As I look into the audience, I see a few people that have heard me speak before, and if I'm boring you, I'll tell you when to wake up. Honor flight is more than lip service. We hear the words, thank you for your service, and then move on. Honor flight Thanks for the service. We fly veterans at no cost to them to Washington to be honored and thanked officially for their service. Uh, 
Honor Flight is not a government agency. It's a private charity funded through contributions, which I would invite you even to make into the little box outside. But I'm going to read a passage that was written by a Marine chaplain, Father Dennis Edward O'Brien. It is the soldier and not the reporter who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier and not the poet who has given us the freedom of speech. And it is the soldier, not the organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag, who allows the protesters to burn the flag. And that's what a soldier is. So those of you who are veterans and have not yet had the opportunity to be so honored, I invite you to stop by my table in the back and get an application to go on one of our seven flights next year. To date, Honor Flight Chicago has taken close to 11,000 veterans to Washington free of charge. It's wonderful. I flew a little over a year ago. I said, it's not for me. I had been to Washington before. Let the other guys go. And then on my 89th birthday, I said, you know, if I'm going to do it, I better do it now because I don't know what's coming next. And I flew a year ago, September, and I haven't come back to Earth yet. It is just the most marvelous experience. And it doesn't make any difference if you were in combat, if you were in the line that supplied the guys in combat. If you're black, if you're white, yellow, green, pink, whatever color your skin is, whatever religion you adhere to, whatever your sexual orientation, we want to honor you. The World War II veterans came back to multitudes of crowds, but the few World War II veterans that are still around should be honored again. Korean vets came back. People didn't even know we were gone. It was not a war widely covered by the press. Vietnam vets came back. They were told not even to wear their uniforms in the airport because people spit at them and demeaned them and insulted them for fighting a war that they didn't believe in. So they, above all, need to be honored. I thank you for listening to me. I will be back at the table. I invite you to write notes of thank you to veterans that will be given to them uh, as they return home from Washington. And if the spirit moves you, we have a jar for donations. Each flight today, let me go back. The original flight cost $65,000. Today they cost $140,000 a piece. And thank God we have some wonderful donors that pay for these flights. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bill. Well, it's been a tradition at our Veterans Day observance to recognize a Highland Park veteran who's been nominated by one of the local veterans organizations as a hero among us. This year, Commander Dick Lee of the American Legion Post 145 will present one of my dearest friends, this year's honoree, Larry Sassarossi.
Uh, thank you and good morning. Mayor Rotaring, uh, members of the City Council, distinguished guests, fellow veterans and active duty military personnel, family members, ladies and gentlemen. Lawrence James Sassarosi, who was born in Modena, Italy, emigrated to the United States in 1937 and settled in the Highland Park, Highwood area. He's lived here ever since, with the exception of when he attended Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. While attending Marquette, he joined the U.S. Naval ROTC program as a midshipman. Upon graduating from Marquette in 1956, he was commissioned as an ensign, serving on active duty for three and a half years. His service included serving as an assistant legal officer at the Naval Recruiting Station in San Diego, California, and attending and graduating from the U.S. Naval Justice School in Newport, Rhode Island. Larry served as a first lieutenant and assistant gunnery officer aboard the destroyer USS Sutherland on its Pacific tour patrolling the Formosa Straits. He also served as battalion commander at Recruit Training Command, Great Lakes Naval Station. He was honorably discharged in 1967, having attained the rank of lieutenant, and he remained in the inactive reserves. In 2018, the State of Illinois Department of Veterans Affairs, along with the Governor's Office of the Illinois Bicentennial, selected Larry as one of only 200 veterans statewide to be named as an, <coughs> excuse me, as an Illinois Bicentennial Honor 200 honoree. The Honor 200 award nominees were evaluated on achievements and contributions made by each honoree that aided, benefited, and provided inspiration to local communities and fellow veterans by going above and beyond the call of duty. Larry has been a champion for local veterans, always seeking opportunities to have them honored by our community. He has been one of the staunchest advocates for the dwindling number of World War II veterans to ensure they have numerous platforms to share their stories with one another, the general public, and especially younger generations. As an active member of the American Legion Highland Park Post 145 for the past 12 years, Larry served as post commander from August of 2015 to July of 2019. He also chaired numerous 10th district committees such as the Veteran Affairs and Rehabilitation Committee and the Hospital Services Committee in addition to serving as a 10th district historian. In September of this year, Larry was sworn in as the 2023-2024 10th District Commander, overseeing 19 posts throughout Lake County. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the City of Highland Park 2023 Veterans Day Hero Among Us honoree, Larry Sassarosi. Okay, thank you very much for being here. My name is Larry Sassarosi, as you heard. That's about all I know, seriously. I am really overwhelmed. I am humbled because when I think of who received this before me, on four occasions, I was a presenter. There was Neil Iovino, Suburban Baton Death March. Unbelievable. He came back here and lived in the Highland Park and very normal life, but he survived and he was such a hero that he helped sell war bonds at the end of World War II. Around here, he also went around Sunset Foods. He was the beginning of uh, his Facebook. He went to something he said, you hear him say, hey, your sister called, call her, or your uncle. He was very active in the community and a real hero. Then there was Sheldon Conowitz. You see the monument we have in town, he was the spirit behind it. You don't see his name, because he passed on to a higher position when it was, uh, he was no longer a commander. Without him, there would not be the monument. Uh, Jerry Adler. Jerry, are you here? I didn't see Jerry come in. He was a uh, Vietnam. He, he received his rifleman, rifleman badge, and he went on to become very successful uh, CEO of major corporations. 
No, Dick Lee, Commander Lee. One silver star, two bronze stars, Vietnam War. There's a hero. And I stayed there. What the hell for? It just amazes me. Not only humbled by those people, I'm humbled by the city of Highland Park. Highland Park has been the forefront of strength and, and service to the community. Because of our proximity to Fort Sheridan, we have a unique role. We uh, also, during World War II, there was a USO here in Highland Park. Just think, shaking, I'm shaking. Uh, uh, USO in Highland Park, the biggest around except for Chicago. On Central, no, Green Bay Road, just east of Central. <laughs> Across from Sunset Foods is a white building. That was the USO. Oh, my good God. Um, it was very, very productive. So, and also, from Fort Sheridan, we had three generals, two I'm very familiar with. They graduated from Elm Place School. Tom Clark, who over in World War II, now Eisenhower was the commander, but the brains behind it was Tom Clark. He was the one to set the strategy for the invasion of, of Europe. Also, there was General Wainwright. Wainwright was uh, head of Bataan when it got taken over. He survived the death march, came back, and if you go where Elm Place School is, and where Indian Trail, there's a tunnel there called the Wainwright Tunnel. Both outstanding gentlemen. Also, there was a World War I hero, uh, Robert E. Wood. He went to the Park in 1929, and he built a home on Laurel Avenue at the very end of Laurel Avenue, which became the senior citizen home until recently. And I have a little affection for that home. If you go in there, you see all that woodwork? That was my father. He was a cabinet maker. I mean, I got fired the first day, but he... <laughs> anyway, he, all that work was done by him. Now, it was after General uh, Wood had left, but that became the Cedar Center Center for a period of time. Now, going back in Highland Park, I came back quite active. And we always had a big 4th of July. We have to, we have to acknowledge last year tragedy beyond belief. But we came back through the leadership of Mayor Rottery. We come back strong. It was a great walk this past year, and now we go upward and onward. But it would happen, happen. But that's Highland Park, very resilient, totally, totally resilient. We always had strong Fourth of July parades. But when I came back in 1958, they're sort of not as large. We wanted to get drawn to the court. To, to attend. So you offer them two to five hundred dollars. Didn't quite work out. So what we did, we held a Deerfield, Emerson originally, you know, he became uh, Northmore, Northbrook, where we would start at 10, Deerfield would be at noon, and North, Northbrook would be at, uh, at two o'clock. And some would do all three parades. In fact, let me tell you about a funny one. I'm working with, as a volunteer with Susan Garrett, a great state senator. She says a better a U.S. government senator. Anyway, she says, come with me. We're going to do all three parades. I'm going to do somebody, Barack Obama. And there was all of a sudden behind him. We walked from Highland Park through Deerfield and through Northbrook. One of the best experiences I had. Uh, the port revitalized the town. I've seen so much happen here, and it's such a privilege to be honored by this community, how we came back from what happened the 4th of July. I think I remember being in the parade, we just passed under the shooter. I was at the American Legion vehicle, it was a, uh, a pickup truck, and we just, we, think, we just passed under it. And uh, of course, Tommy me say, listen to the fireworks, but a veteran said, that's automatic fire. But we're here today. We move forward. We've been blessed to have very good leaders. We got one now. We disagree, but we, she's good. She puts your time and effort. We also had two interesting ones, Stan Pierce and Ray Teresi. I was a friend of both. We're up with Ray Teresi, he told me how to set pins at the bowling alley. Dan Pierce, because of my wife, who was 
family was very big in Chicago, nailed me to volunteer. They were great mayors. My problem became when they ran against each other. So I went to my good friend, the recent John Weinman. John, he said, I don't know, I'm out of town. I joined them. That's how we handled voting for them. Two, but not only them, we had good leadership, a strong community, very proud of this community. And the standard received this award. And we were well. God bless all of you, and God bless America. God bless Larry Sassarosi. Thank you. And now, the quintet. Thank you again. I'd now like to introduce David Bazard, trustee for the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 4737, who will give the closing prayer. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Almighty God, ruler of the universe and Lord of us all, with grateful hearts on this Veterans Day, 
We remember before you the men and women of our country who, in the day of decision, ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not just thank them for their service, but also honor it by mindfully using our freedom to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. That we may employ our freedom in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations. And that we may not rest until all your peoples share in the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. Help us to persevere in your limitless patience and to finish the good work begun long ago. Strengthen our efforts to blot out ignorance and prejudice, to abolish poverty and crime, and to strive for justice and peace among all peoples. Dear God, Lord of hosts and judge of the nations, on this day we honor those who have already borne the battle, but we also commend to your gracious care in keeping the women and men in our armed forces currently serving at home and abroad, as well as our allied brethren currently in the breach. Grant to them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and give to them and to all who bear arms the grace and discernment always to be guided by the vision of your prophets and your commandment to do no murder and never to forget that the purpose of our armed force and vigilance is to hasten the day when all are led from prejudice to truth, when all are delivered from hatred, cruelty, and revenge, when all your peoples may together stand reconciled before you in the peace which is the fruit of righteousness, when we may finally beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, when nations shall not lift sword against nation study war no more. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Please go in peace. Have a great day.